hello everyone and welcome to my channel so today i am going to be drawing and painting a herd of zebra which you can see up on the top left of my screen so i'm going to start by drawing the first zebra and i'll start with the head and then i will um, measure everything against the head Now they've got quite boxy chins and cheeks. So now his head, one time his head is his neck. So I'll just, off, I'll complete his head to his ear. Got quite round ears, these little ones. So now one time his head is his neck. Do that. And if I need, actually, I'm gonna use a pencil for this. Just makes it a bit easier. Here's the back of a pencil. One size of his head is his neck. So his neck goes to about there like that and they're quite square compared to a horse they're quite boxy so I get that like that then his neck and his body is one and a bit so from there to there and then about that much is the first zebra's body they don't have much of a wither there we go and I can't see that one's bottom behind the second zebra so I'm just gonna do the chest shape and their legs disappear off into the grass so I don't have to worry so much about um, the leg distance into the grass the length of the legs because yeah they do disappear into the grass he's got quite a tubby little belly okay and then come down and around like that okay so I'm gonna leave that zebra there and I'm gonna start with the second zebra which looks like a young one I'm gonna draw its little face like that it doesn't have to be exactly like the reference but I want it to be close like that I mean this goes because it's freehand drawing there's going to be little differences again draw the ear you can see he's a little fraction shorter than the other one and he's facing a little bit away from us so he's foreshortened they call that foreshortened so i'm going to do his neck a little bit shorter than his head so i'll mark that there and his neck and head are more upright so i'll do him a little bit shorter like that and then his little chest like that got to have a look at his back so his head his back again the same it's a fraction fraction longer than his the length of his head so i'll just do it like that like that and then his bottom's a bit rounder excuse me bear bear my little dog being a noisy little pippy okay so that's i might not be able to fit all of these zebras in so i'm probably going to fit just a handful of them in so i'll pop the other zebra's head in there yeah, I'm definitely not going to be able to fit them all in, but that's okay. It's still going to make a nice little scene, like three is an odd number, which is good. Have, having an odd number of any animal for a herd, so I just might draw these three. That sort of, and they all connect, which I really like too. Having animals that connect together creates an interesting scene. I've done it with deer and antelope before, and it's good fun. Um... You can see I've got his shoulder about there and his bottom goes off out the back there. Now his neck and his body is a fraction longer. Just a fraction longer like that. Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna fit them all in. That's okay, I'll just do three, the front three. So it's this one, oh, you can't see my finger, that one, and the, the two behind it is what I'm gonna do. Okay got to make this one's the, the stripes will help to put the direction where I want them like put them give them perspective of the direction so I'll, just, I'll, I'll block in his little mane now and I'm not going to use ink today I'm just going to do the pencil and then watercolor actually his legs forward so change that grab my eraser let's clean that off and I'm using Arches watercolor paper today I like my Archer's watercolour paper and it's a hot, uh, hot press. So 
it's smooth because I like to use smooth as well. It was a toss up whether I was going to do a portrait, a human portrait today. I wanted to practice portraits, but I was just totally inspired to draw a zebra. <laughs> so I decided on a herd of zebra instead. Maybe, to, maybe tomorrow or the next day I'll do a portrait of people. Portrait. So I want to practice that. Now I'll draw his eye in. Now the background is just grasses and things. So um, that's an easy background to do just with yellow ochre. Let's have a look. Now his leg, you can only just see the back of that front leg. And then maybe the other one, a little bit of it there. And his bottom's towards us. So his tail comes down the middle like that and disappears off into the grass. You can't really see it. I will give him a bit more length of leg there like that. I'll give this one a tail down here. You can't really see it, but I'll draw it in anyway like that. Okay. I might have to shorten this little guy's head. I think I've got his head a fraction too long, but that's okay, that's easy to do. I'm just gonna erase the tip of his nose, and just shorten his little face, just a little bit. I want him to look a bit younger. And shorten the little faces and it makes them look a little bit younger. I'll deepen his chest a little bit. There we go, that looks a bit better. And his tail comes down here. And his other leg comes down there. Right. Now this third zebra. I'm just going to erase that bottom part of his face and tidy up his ear a little bit. Like that. And it doesn't matter that I don't fit everyone in, all the horses in, all the zebras in. It does not matter at all. Come down here like that. There we go. And his legs disappear off behind this other one. So you can't see his front legs, you can just see his back legs. So I'll draw just the back of his back leg coming down there, like that. And then come down into here. Got to round off his bottom a little bit more. But that's all right, I can do that like that. And that back leg comes back here. And they'll disappear off into the grass. Okay, I might be able to get the one more, the little one that's behind him. You can just see the top of his head and his ear. Like that. And the top of his neck. It's fun to draw like this, to have all your animals um, joined. It just creates more natural... It gives it movement, I think. It gives it a natural feeling and movement. And then his little body comes out the back there, like that. I've got him a bit further back than he needs to be, but that's okay. I can just, doesn't matter. Actually, I'll give, I'll make his bottom that way. And he give his tail down there. Right, and the other zebra's coming in at the back, right at the very back. So that's okay. And then there's just a ton of grass. So I'll draw the grass in, at the, in the foreground, like that. And then I get to add the stripes. And those legs will disappear off into there. Okay, so I'm going to start with the stripes. So he's got little stripes that come off into there. They go, and this is these help give dimensions and proportions as well on a zebra because they go the direction of the fur, like that. And have lots of little stripes coming around this way and then around there and I'll fill all that in with paint with watercolour as I go then come down and around to up onto the mane a little bit and I like to draw it all in first because drawing's my absolute favourite thing to do drawing's my passion 
above all else drawing is my passion it's not going to be exactly like the photograph you know you, I, I take it like i use the reference as a reference i don't do like the stripes exactly the same and that sort of stuff i like to you know change things a little bit just to keep it interesting but i love the detail i've always loved drawing the detail in a zebra they've always been fun to me come down and around there and then that stripe actually breaks off into two I'll just do that and then come down onto that one and then these ones come up and split because they go down and around the legs it's amazing how their fur works and how their patterns go they really are very well camouflaged okay then you can see just see them on the inside of that leg okay now drawing onto his belly they go thinner at the bottom where they join so it doesn't matter if I've got different marks there come down and around here like that and then I'm gonna come up to his back and then take one up onto the line on his back and the white of the paper is going to be the white of the zebra. So that's what I like about watercolour. That really helps um, to make uh, the bright, bright lights. Okay, now he's got stripes on his legs. Come down here like that in front of that other zebra. Like that and coming down and around. like that okay and you won't see the rest of him because he'll disappear off into the grass now the inside of his leg is white so that's all good now this other little zebra he's almost he's sort of facing away from us a little bit so i'll give him slightly different stripe direction because he's sort of go this one's side on so his stripes come straight down this one's sort of on a slight angle So yes, yeah, so I pop um, this stripe comes down and around and so these ones straight on so this one again because he's sort of facing away from us a little bit I'll have them on a slight angle that way I forgot to draw his little mane on too he's got a little standy uppy mane so I'll pop that on and again he's not exactly the same as the reference which I got off Unsplash, which is a great royalty-free reference site. Come down and around. And I'm just having a quick look. Come down onto his shoulder. Okay. Come down. Now, again, he's got a stripe down his back. You can see more of his dorsal stripe because he's facing away from us. So now, again, because he's away, facing away, his tummy stripes will have more of an oval shape to them facing the forward, like facing, going in that direction. I will erase the little spine line there because they don't, they sort of all join on and go like that. Come down and around. Um, and I'm going to do the background. I'll do this. He's got a bit about here. There's just a little, like it's it's a plane. So it's there's grass where they are. And then it sort of goes off onto a, a plane and then the sky's blue. So I'll do that as well. Because I need to practice my backgrounds. Okay, then come down and around. Like that and onto his bottom and his legs are facing away from us so he spot his stripes again they go away they go in a slightly different direction that's where zebras are fun because they really do help you get perspective and his bottom's facing that way so whoops and I'll sort of have them at about the same height as the ones on the opposite leg there we go I can add the detail the fine detail on the tail in a little bit and I've only given them all one ear each. I better put the other ears on because they've, they've got two ears. 
I'm a silly duffer. Okay. Now this one, he's side on, so he's oh, got my your pencils running out of lead. So come down here like that. And having a look, he's got one that comes down and under. Again, it's not going to be exactly the same. Doesn't have to be exactly the same. And all these are different. So they're like zebra stripes are like fingerprints. They're quite fun actually. And they are um, white with black stripes. Hang on. Or are they black with white stripes? I can't remember now. Oh my gosh. I was told at the zoo. I was told what they were. Hang on. I think they're, they're black with white stripes. <laughs> That's right, they're black skinned with white stripes. Because I went to, the, we've got a zoo in a town near us and yeah, they explained how, this, how their fur works. But yeah, they've got black skin and white white stripes, white fur. And it's, he's got actually, he's got quite thick stripes, this little good, good dude. So I'll give him thicker stripes. And he disappears off next to that one. It's really hard to get them all tangled up. Okie doke. So now this one comes up and around. I'm going to end that one just about there. And then I'm going to take them around his little bot bot. Like that. Come down and around. All right, and that stripe comes around the inside. Okay, I'll do his little mane coming down here. All right, um, I can really only see a few of the stripes on this one. I can only see his bottom stripe, so I'm just going to rough them in like that come down his leg you can't actually see much of that leg I better draw it in like that and the rest disappears off behind okay so I'm gonna do the background first because I'm actually gonna use an old palette that I've got sitting here it's full of it's still got paint from the other day I don't know why oh, hang on I'm just gonna try and I've got a bit of wire here that's bothering me I'm gonna get that out of the way there we go okay so I'm going to start with the sky. Actually, I better clean my palette. And so that drawing's pretty well. I'm, it's plain. I'm not going to worry about I was going to ink it, but I'm not going to ink it. I've decided not to. I'll just stick with traditional watercolour because I'm going to keep this one for myself, I think. I might keep this one and frame it because I've got a frame that I need to put something in. So, and I think I've made this the right size. So that's the plan. So for the sky, I'm going to go coat. I'm going to wet the background with my brush. Just going to drop it in the water, run it over the top, wet all of that sky. I'm going to give it some clouds. The background doesn't have clouds, but I'm going to give it clouds. Pop that in there like that. And then drop in cobalt blue. Get that on the top of my palette. I'll get quite a bit more than that, actually. And I'm going to drop that in and go in the top of the sky's darker and drag it down like that. And I can leave, I can lift out little bits for, for the sky, for the clouds. I'll just drag it down to the grass line like that. I'll take it down a bit lower than the grass line actually. And then I'm just going to get my bit of cloth and lift off some clouds like that so you just use a bit of cloth and the clouds are bigger in the foreground and smaller in the distance so you can make some big clouds at the front and just a couple little smaller ones just like one blot for the background and that is all I'm gonna do for the sky that's the end of that I'm not going to touch the sky again sky is done simple and sweet just yeah try not to fuss now I'm gonna grab yellow ochre Put that on my next little pan, get it quite diluted. Doesn't matter that that's um, wet, it'll, it'll go up into the sky a little bit, but that's all right because the mountain in the background will diffuse it. I'll go over that a little bit more when it's, I'll take it up a little bit more. Gotta get a bit more yellow ochre. 
bit more yellow ochre. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to take that down. I'll mix that into the sky a little bit. It'll, it'll diffuse itself up and go a bit green, which is fine. All right, now I'm going to cut around the zebras. I'm not going wet into wet around the zebras. I'm just going to go wet on dry. So wet watery paint on the dry background. And I'm still using the same brush because it's got a flat edge that I can use for cutting around edges as well as a rounded edge, which gives me a bit more surface to be able to drag paint around. You see this comes together quite quickly. I'm going to need to get some more paint on my palette, a bit more water as well. There we go. All right, a bit more water. All right, come down and around. Get a bit more water. And I'm going to come underneath these zebras, get a bit more yellow. I got it. I grabbed a bit of a different colour there, but it doesn't matter. I'll just mix it in. I think I grabbed a bit of. Um, uh, can't remember what it's called now. I grabbed a bit of another little ready yellow, red, ready orange colour. That's fine though. It doesn't matter because it'll all blend in. Because I've got to do shadows under the zebras anyway. I can actually cut off where the legs are because they're hidden in grass. I've just got to leave the actual fairy bits because they um, I need the white of the paper to stay pristine if I can and down and around and blend that up a little bit because that's all going to be textured anyway with grass so this is just the base layer just the base layer that's all going to be textured with grass so I'm going to be yeah, focusing on the background first Come down and around. And that'll be in grass. Having a quick look at my screen. And I'm literally now I'm just going to take that down to the bottom of the painting. All the way to the bottom. I probably could have used a slightly bigger brush, but I'm comfortable with a smaller brush. Okay, so I'm just going to drag that all the way down like that. Keeping my brush quite wet just drag it all the way to the bottom like that and this paper because it's um hot press which is flat and smooth it does tend to absorb the paint quickly um not quite sure why that is but it just does seem to do that okay now i am going to get some stronger yellow ochre less water more pigment i'm just going to add more yellow ochre but I'm going to do it in the direction while it's still damp in the direction of the grass because the grass is flying in every direction just creating texture doesn't have to be exactly right take that right to the bottom I will add shadows and stuff as well you can't really see them they've photoshopped the shadows out because they wanted the brightness that's the only thing about photos is references so I like drawing, drawing from nature it's because yeah, people edit out shadows and things, and I like the contrast. Okay. And I've got mine photos off the royalty re free website, uh, Unsplash. Pixabay is good as well. And these, I'm just doing into the foreground. They'll get shadows, shadows. The detail will get finer, more fine as it dries and I move into the foreground, I'll add just a few brighter, cleaner, not so smudgy looking um, strands of grass or blades of grass. But for now, I'm just, they'll get smaller into the, smaller and fuzzier into the distance. I'll take that right around. I've got to dampen my brush a bit more, soften it up a bit more. Like that, come down and around. You can see you can see the texture off into the distance, but I'll leave. I just won't do it as visible as as liney. I'll just create like blotches of colour like that into the distance. That just keeps it interesting 
but stops it. You don't want it all the same length and height because it will all look the flat. It'll look flat. So you've got to have different shapes going off into the distance. So I'll have little smudges that all blend together with patches of the lighter paper underneath like that. Okay, now the mountain, well, it's not really a mountain, is more of a flat. Um, you can't see the texture of the grass at all. So I'm actually going to strengthen that now. I'm going to run across with more pigment, less water. Still yellow ochre, still the same colour. More pigment, less water, right across the top of that mountainscape like that. And I'm going to do that again, actually. I'm going to grab another little brush load. I'm going to drag that. And then I can add some trees because you can see there's a few little trees up the top there as well. So I'm going to, while that's still wet, I'm actually going to use, uh, that's not the right green. I'm going to grab uh, olive. I want my olive, olive green. And I'm going to add a bit of more blue to it just to darken that olive to a darker green. I want it to be quite dark and you can see it's not exactly the same as the reference. I'll pop a little bit sort of there. I'll pop a little bit here. It'll diffuse into the background just to create little tree line. A little bit of a little bit of shrubbery here and there like that. A few little blobs of trees like that not too many just sort of where they are in the photo just like that and i'm gonna pretty much have a look do i have there's a couple little ones off here in the background i'll just do that there we go oh and there's actually a little mountain way off in the distance so i'm going to pop that in so i'm going to make a purple for that one in the distance so i'm going to go i'll use my uh, cobalt that i've got there and i'll grab a bit of cadmium red and mix that with Oh, that's too much red. Get more old cobalt. Just to make a purple. Like that. And then I'll soften that off in a damp. Pick a tiny little bit of that up. And then do a distant mountain back here. But you can see one little mountain going off in the distance. I've done that a bit bigger than it is in the reference, but that's fine. And I'll take it off, taper it off like that. And there we go. So we've got that little bit of a mountain way off in the distance. Actually, I, I won't change that. I'll leave that as it is. Right. So now I'm going to do some more detail. Actually, I'll, I'll do the zebras and then I'll do the detail on the grass last. So I'm going to grab a finer brush and I'm not going to use black for the zebras. I'm going to use burnt umber and cobalt blue. Burnt umber mixed with cobalt blue. Burnt umber, get a bit more of that. Mix it with cobalt blue, which will make a natural grey. Okay, quite diluted to begin with. I'll add layers. And you can see that's made a grey. Actually, I'm going to get a finer brush than that. So I'll go back to my burnt umber. I'm going to mix up quite a lot of that burnt umber and blue. So I've got enough of it on my palette to get me through a few zebras. Okay, and I'll do, keep fiddling with that until I get it to the right consistency of grey that I like. Oops more Woo, that's too much blue see i keep adding too much of everything go back a bit of burnt umber Oops. bit of burnt umber i think i've got a bit of paint up my nose in i wipe my <laughs> touch my nose and i've got a bit of paint on it okay burnt umber cobalt blue there we go so i'm happy with that and that's quite a lot so now clean my brush grab my thinner brush it's a silver black velvet it's a slightly smaller silver black velvet okay and i'm going to start with the nose, with the muzzles, the background's dry. And I'm gonna do a diluted wash of this brown that I've made with burnt umber, cobalt blue. And I'm gonna take, do a wash of it. Again, I'm leaving the white of the paper as the white of the zebras. Come down. And the very first layer is quite diluted. So quite a bit of water and a little bit of paint. 
Now I'm going to go the outside of their ears. The outside of their ears, the trim of their ears is quite dark. The inside is quite light. I can do it. And these, I like these silver black velvet brushes. I've got a mixture of cheap brushes and expensive brushes and I use them all. Um, okay, so now I've got to try and not mix up my lines. <laughs> It's like a jigsaw puzzle drawing zebras. Okay, come down here. And each time I add a layer, I'll get darker as I go down. Okay. So. See the fuzzy bits on the top of their mane. That comes down onto his neck. So it's quite, it's a little bit time consuming. There'll be about three layers, I think. And then the shadows on the zebra, I'll use a blue or an indigo because they've got their bellies and that are shaded. So, um, if you want, shadows help give things form. And shadows are probably one of the most in a landscape or with any kind of a scene. But yeah, shadows are critical. To making something look right that's why you know you'll see a painting that something doesn't look quite right about it take notice of where the shadows are and if it's got any and usually nine out of ten times it'll be the shadows are wrong or they're non-existent so if you're looking at a painting and you go mm, i can't quite figure out what's wrong with that double check your shadows and your sh and your shadows on your whatever the subject is and around it because everything casts a shadow and if you forget your shadows, everything will look light and one like one tone. And okay, so now I'm going to come up and around there. I'm using this. I, I like me round brushes. I've started to use. I forgot what they're called. They're sort of a semi-round. I forgot what their name is. They've got a name. This one. Um, what is it? Filbert. I think they're a filbert. They're called a filbert. They've got a half round sort of end. You can use them, the side of them to be flat or the end of them to be round. Okay. And I mixed up quite a bit, so it'll go a fair way for the stripes. And it's not exactly like the reference, like I said, because um, I couldn't fit them all on my page. <laughs> but I've got a frame that's this size, so I wanted to do one this size. It's about an A4. So I'm using the frame that I've got. Okay, and then coming down and around. Okay, it doesn't matter that there's a little bit of puddling at the bottom. Um, it's gonna, I didn't draw the end of this stripe, so I'm gonna do that. It's hard to keep track of where his stripes are. <laughs> do that like that, and then that one comes down and around. And because I've done the pencil under drawing on it, I haven't inked it, I can sort of alter lines. And you can also erase them after you've finished and it's all dry if you want to. You can erase a few of the excess lines if you've got any that you've missed. But I did my pencil drawing quite lightly. I'm going to have to mix up some more of this grey, but it's really simple. It's just burnt umber cobalt blue. It's quite simple. And very diluted for the first layer. And continue on and around and there'll be a little bit of yellow ochre in there a little bit of I'll add a bit of red as well because their coats get sun bleached you can't really you can see it a little bit on the white fur on their back if you look at the I don't know whether you can see the reference if you can zoom in on the reference photo up in the top left hand corner um, you can see that they've got that's his tail down there um, They've got a little bit of red on their coats as well. You've got It's fun to look at colours. Like you look at something and you think, oh, it's black and white. But then you look really closely and you can see so many more colours. It's one of, one of the girls that I used to go to classes, art classes with. She said to me, you know, when you're looking at a tree and you're looking at leaves, um, take a lot of notice of how many greens and browns there are in a leaf and are in the branches. And I started looking and I was amazed at how much colour 
you start seeing, once someone points it out, to look at the colours. I've got to add a bit more brown to that. It's not quite black enough. Or not quite dark enough. A bit more blue, sorry, to mix with that brown to make it a darker grey. Um, yeah, I was quite surprised. So, yeah, next time you're looking, or driving down the road or whatever, have a look at the trees. And it's not just, it's never just green. You know, there's brown and blues and all kinds of colours. It's really magical. Once you start looking, once you start seeing the colours in things that you're looking at, it really opens your mind up to how wonderful the world is for a start. But also, yeah, how colourful the world is. Like, if you Google an Australian snow gum, they have every colour in the rainbow. rainbow. They, you know, people think, oh, they're a white gum. They're a white gum tree. But when you see them when they get wet, they are a rainbow. They're red and pink and gold. It's amazing. And that's why with zebras, like these guys, I've gone off on a bit of a tangent there. But there's, they've got reds and browns. And I'm starting with a brownie grey to begin with. But I will build up stronger tones and more. The ones closer to us are a fraction darker too. Come up and around like that. Okay. Down onto his belly. That's as thick as stripe. Comes down and around like that. And goes to a point. And he's got a stripe that goes the length of his back because that's his dorsal stripe like that and again the wider the paper is the wider of the zebra doesn't matter it's a bit of a jaggedy there i can join that up down and around okay come down and around stripe onto there so this is just the base layer come down and around fill that in all right I've got to get I'll have to strengthen up these stripes. I'll do a stripe, one stripe down his tail. That's his tail there. And then he's got little stripes going down like that. All right, so I'm quite happy with that. That defines that. And I'm gonna start on this other one. Again, do the dark around his ears. And there'll be three, or three, three ish layers, I reckon. down and around I've, got, I've added a lot of water to this back one because they're a little bit further into the distance just a little oh i missed a bit i missed a bit of background there see that when there's so much detail in the drawing it's really easy to miss just a little bit but i can go back in i've still got a bit of that oh no i haven't got any of that on my palette anymore i have to mix up a little bit more yellow ochre and just pop that in there to fill that gap it's easy to miss little bits that zebra disappears behind this one so I won't worry about that too much. Come down and around and just continue on till they're all filled in like that. And these brushes, these silver black velvets, oh, <laughs> like I hold quite a bit of water. I just blocked that where I didn't want it, but that's okay. You won't even notice that. I was gonna cl clean my brush, wet it Take the excess moisture off and just scrub over that little bit and it's gone back to the white of the paper there we go i've got to make that a little bit i've got to do a few more layers two more layers a slightly darker each one slightly less pigment slightly more oh no slightly more pigment slightly less water so it gets a little bit thicker and it gets a tone stronger not necessarily darker, just deeper, a deeper colour, but exactly the same colour. 
And then at the end, I'll add the warmth of the reds on top. Okay, now go round, whoops. I'm gonna try and get the point back on the brush. There we go. Come back here. And then fill that in. Just wanna strengthen that one up a bit. There we go. See his other ear there. I didn't do around the eyes on these ones either, so I better do that while I'm while I'm focused. Yep, there we go. Done that. Come down, fill this in. Whoops, got to get a bit more water on my brush. It wasn't flowing at all. So this one's behind. Got to be careful not to smudge it onto that other one. But he will be a lot more shadow. Down this stripe here. Draw his tail. Like that. Comes down between his back legs. Not going to worry about the finer detail. Now I'm going to go on and I'm going to add the next layer, burnt umber, more blue, more brown and less water to make it stronger. So less water, more paint. And then I'm going to not go all over it, but the bottoms where naturally the light doesn't hit as much. And I take that, the bottoms of the stripes, I can add it on some parts of the mane because the mane is stronger and darker but darker take it darker at the bottoms and you can also add blue I can also use indigo towards the end I'll probably use indigo on the darkest darks because that's my go-to dark dark okay you see that starts to give them a little bit of dimension um, okay come here Fill that out, darken that off. And you can see if you, because I add the shadows at the bottom too. Add a bit of blue, a bit of blue. Get a bit more blue, a bit less water, a bit more pigment, a bit more dark. Okay. And again, take that around the darker parts. And they're pretty much all dark under here. And that gives them a three-dimensional effect. And then very last of all, I'll add the grass detail. Very last of all. And again, I'm wet the side of my brush, use the side of my brush. That's what I like. These, these have got a flat tip, like a, a pointy tip rather. But you can use the side, the, the, the belly of the brush to get a thicker stroke towards the bottom and fill that line in a bit easier, like that. There we go. Okay, come down and around. Okay, I'm happy with that for that first zebra. I've left the top, the highest parts of him uh, quite light. Okay, again, so I'm gonna darken up. See, I've got a bit more blue in that. That's fine, though. I'm going to add a bit more brown and a bit more blue. It takes a bit of fiddling to get, get to the exact colour you want. Pop his little eyeball in, his pupil. Come down and around. Because this one's again, oh, see what I did there? I accidentally took the dark too high up, but it doesn't matter. There we go. And you keep it soft, like it doesn't have to be exact. I'm keeping the, the movement of the brush. 
you know, an acrylic painting, I could probably get a whole lot more detail. It's just, you know, it's just about layers, shadows. Once I pop the shadows and the grass detail in, it'll really pop. And that's what I love. And it's, you know, I've been doing it enough to let, I used to get really upset and think, oh gosh, it's not happening. I haven't got it looking right yet. And think it would, you know, and be worried that it's ruined. It wasn't going to work. And then I'd get to the end and it'd be like, oh, okay, it worked. <laughs> I always sort of preempt it and, and worry whether it's going to work or not. But I've done enough now, thank God, that I'm um, quite confident. Excuse my dog's barking. I think my husband's got the tractor down the paddock. Okay. Come down, darken in some of these stripes. He's moving some hay today. He's got a few bales of hay going off to other places. So he's loading the tractor up and gonna get it all and take it where it needs to go. Come down here. Then I'm not gonna darken up. Gotta be careful here that I don't get too tight to the top. I've gotta leave the tops of his back light. This one, it will be in more shadow on his white fur because he's behind everybody pretty much. But I'm only trying to darken up the lower stripes. They can, they can be darker completely at the bottom. There we go, like that. Just helps to keep them a little bit more three-dimensional. Might add a bit. I've got to wet my brush again. Oops, I've got too much water in there, but that doesn't matter. It'll flow to the bottom of the... That's why it's good having your, your pa palette on an angle too because the wet paint, like the watery stuff, sinks to the bottom and you're left with thicker paint at the top, which was a happy accident that I hadn't really realised until recently. Okay, come down and around. Do the stripes on this one's leg. Like that. Do the line down his tail. Got to strengthen up the ear a bit. Like that. All right. Gonna go a stripe. There we go, like that. Okay, now. I'm gonna add, actually I'll, go, I'll do that, I'll pop the pupils in. Their eyes are very dark. Their eyes are very, very dark. So add the dark, dark in like that. Okay. Now, having a quick look, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna clean my brush and grab a little bit of yellow ochre to pop in that, I'm gonna clean my brush, make sure the water's clean. Get a little bit of yellow ochre pop in here because I totally lost that bit there. So I'm just going to fill that little bit in there and you won't even know that I missed it. Just having a look, I can't see anywhere else that I've missed. Just that bit. There we go. Like that. Okay, so having a quick look. And now for the shadows, I'm going to, I'm going to do one more layer of burnt umber. I'm going to add indigo this time, burnt umber and indigo. So that'll make a really strong dark. You know, different blues will make a different kind of dark. So yeah, now I'm using indigo, which will make a really almost black grey. So burnt umber and indigo with the Schmincke watercolours. Take that into the very darkest darks. The very bottom. And then come down. I'll do that into his eye, into his pupil, around his ear. So yeah, indigo is a wonderful colour for the very darkest darks. I very often will use a blue. And I've just mixed a bit of burnt umber with it, and not a lot of water, just tons of pigment. For the darkest darks. 
come down. Excuse my dogs in the background, I'm so sorry. And then pull that in. Like that. Okay. And I'll do a stripe on his tail. Like that. And his tail disappears off there. Okay. Again, indigo, it's a beautiful dark, dark. Down. On the bottom. Come down inside that thigh like that. Okay. Do the dorsal stripe, tie down his tail. I can darken up these stripes off into the distance. They are a bit more solidly dark. Like that. Then I'll go on to this last one, get some more indigo. And some more burnt umber. A lot of, lot of pigment, not a lot of water. Go on to this third zebra. Like that. Down and around. I think a bit more there. And again, down the tail. Create little stripies like that. Okay. And I'm just having a look at the contrast. I need to create a bit of contrast with the shadows, but I'll use cobalt blue on the white as the shadow on the white to create that contrast that I need against the zebras in the background. I'll darken up. His mane, his ears, like that. Okay. And again, on his tail, like that. All right. Now, okay. I'm going to give that a rest for a minute and I'm going to do some shadow under these guys. Now, I've got an old purple, which is just blue and red sitting on my palette I'm going to add a bit more red to it and I'm going to make the shadows in the in the grass underneath I'm going to add a bit more red than that okay just an old colors that old paint that I've got on another palette just to create shadow under and around these just in strokes, not everywhere. Not, I want them random. And I'll get the shadows under here. It's got to keep it all flowing. And these blades of grass are super duper long. And I'll add detail on the very foreground as I get there. Whoops, that's not the color I was using. I was using the one off the other palette. There we go. So you can see it's very diluted. It'll, it'll dry back quite a bit more pale than it is. Because it does dry back a couple of tones lighter than what you think. And I'll take that right to the foreground here. And then I'm going to go in with an even stronger dark and add a bit of indigo to that. Just for directly under the zebras. Just in that exactly under them like that it's a little bit darker okay okay i'm quite happy with that now 
I'll, I'll take that maybe a little bit to the foreground. Now, I'm also going to add a little bit of shadow just to unify it under these trees up here. Just a little bit of a dark, that darker colour and extend it like that. Just to create a little bit of shadow under there. Right, now I'll, I'll do the lighter grass as once I've done the shadowing on the zebra. So I'm going to go now, I'm going to clean my palette off a little bit. That top bay, I'll clean that top bay off and that second bay. And I'm going to add cobalt blue, but super diluted for the shadows on the white parts of the zebra. So super duper diluted. And I'm just going to take that anywhere that I can see because they're not pure white all over. His legs are quite dark or quite shadowed, shadowed because they're in the grass. A bit more cobalt blue. A lot of water, a ton of water because I want The shadows on the white to not be as strong but the white looks stark um, without being shadowed I'll shadow that other leg completely and again shadow in because the top layer is dry now you can go over the top a little bit I don't have to work between the, the black lines I can go over the top and that will help. Okay. All right, so you can see I've got the, the shadows is the blue. On the, I use the, the blue, just cobalt blue, super diluted for the shadows on the white. And I'll take that around the outside of that zebra because that helps to delineate him from the other one. And helps him pop a little bit and this one in the background is almost most of his face and it helps to contrast them doesn't have to be exact but and I'll pop his legs in shadow like that okay and I'll soften those lines I'll just gonna go back over the edge and to get a bit with a damp brush and just smudge those edges because they're a bit harsh Righto, quite happy with that. Now, I'm also now, you can't really see it in the background, but I'm gonna grab some more yellow ochre and I'm gonna add a bit of transparency in it. So I'm gonna add a bit of a ready, ready tone, ready brown. Love transparency in it to the yellow ochre. Just to give it a bit more I'm contemplating using, I've got a, um, it's what these foreground blades of grass to stand out a bit more. Like that. And they are all sort of leaning towards the foreground, to the, towards the, foot, the front. And they come up beside the horse of the zebras a little bit. So I'll go, actually now I've done the, I've coloured the zebras in pretty much. I can, um, go over the zebra's bodies a little just to make the grass look like it doesn't just stop at the edges of the zebra because that's just icky so I'll take it above up a bit get a bit more on my brush again going over the legs of that zebra a little bit up onto the belly a little bit onto their fur a little bit like that. Transparent sienna and yellow ochre and I keep mixing it and remixing it as I need it. Like that. Come up onto the legs of that one. Like that. Oops, that's a bit of a thick one, but that doesn't matter at all. What I'm going to do with that one, I'm going to get a bit more water and lift that off. See, and you can just take that back a notch so it's not quite as strong. Okay. There we go. Okay, now 
that gray actually looks green that bluey gray i'm going to add a bit of olive green now onto the very foreground i'll get a bit of olive onto my palette but more pigment less water i want a lot of pigment and i'm just going to add a few flecks through it just into the foreground and that brings it all together like that not everywhere not universal not the whole thing okay I'm quite happy with that okay I'll add and a bit of brown I'm just gonna go a bit of burnt umber even just add a bit of burnt umber get a bit of burnt umber not a lot of paint not a lot of water I mean and add a bit of that brown as well just into the very foreground foreground right down close like that so it's only greens browns and greys but it keeps you know keeps the front interesting the foreground interesting I've probably got a bit too much going on there but that's okay I'll have to take it up a little bit up into the background I'll dilute it a bit more so it's not quite as harsh like that and take it up a bit more I could always do a wash over they call it a a glaze once that's dry I can glaze over the top and that'll dull that down a fraction because I've probably got where well, even while it's still damp I can blot it with my cloth because it does um, dial, it does pale back a couple of times it does get a bit paler um, and also I can run over it so this is the, I can run over it with a damp brush, just to soften it all. Just to soften, just to round the zebras a little bit. It's got a bit much going on, but that's all right. You live and learn. You soften that off and it blends it a bit too. So it doesn't look quite so harsh. So just a damp, damp brush around the bottoms of all the zebra just to soften those shadows and soften the lines because you can still move it a little bit while it's still damp all right like that I'll take that down onto that corner now I'm having a quick look all right now I'm gonna add a little bit of gold onto their fur but I'm going to use a transparent sienna onto the fur just a little tiny bit diluted super diluted onto the tops because where the sun's hitting them and Still leaving the white of the paper for 99% of it. <coughs> Just a little bit okay and if I've lost any whites I can always add a bit of um, uh, acrylic paint a bit of white gouache you can always go through and do that if you if you want to if you need to because I can see there's a little bit of gold on most of the bits most of their fur there we go add a little bit onto that zebra as well okay now having a look and I'm gonna make the darkest dark the darkest darkest dark which is indigo with barely any water almost no water like almost pure pigment indigo and I'm just going to use that over the top of the darkest darks so that is pure indigo I haven't added brown pure indigo with almost no pigment no water sorry 
lots of pigment, almost no water. There we go. Take that. into his darkest areas, his very absolute darkest. Like that. All right. And onto his muzzle, the bottom of his muzzle, around the outside of his nostril. Like that. Onto the bottom of his leg, take it down onto his belly. Oops. Let's make that one a bit wider. Excuse my doggos. Okay, having a quick look. Now I've got to darken, really darken up. Goodness, it's because my husband's picking up bales of hay and they can hear the tractor and they want to be out and amongst it all. <laughs> okay. When one dog starts barking, they all start. Okay, so... going to darken these lines on this distant zebra coming right up to the back of this one okay again I'm going to take these darker stripes to the bottoms of the legs one down the tail and I've got to strengthen the stripes because they diffused a little bit when I put the shadow blue, <clears throat> the shadow cobalt over the top before. Okay. And that's the tail. Like that, and I'm having a quick look. So they're starting to really, they are starting to come together now. I've just got to strengthen the blues on this. And right at the bottom of his neck. And take that along the main line. Let's take that down his eye a little bit. That gives that a little bit more depth line it under his belly just a little bit that's indigo and under that one's belly under that one's belly like that okay see that looks okay i've got to do more definition on this one's face i've got to tidy up his stripes come down there like that okay having a quick look all right, I'm quite happy with that, I think. I am now going to add a bit more yellow ochre. And then go back into my yellow ochre. It's got a little bit of green in it, it's got a little bit of blue in it still. That's all right, doesn't matter. And I'm going to just get it quite diluted again and just add some distant, some stronger distant grass. not in lines up and not in vertical lines i'm just going to do it so it's texture just a bit of texture along that distant line like that just to keep it interesting and i reckon i'm going to just about call that done so i'm going to sign that down here the bottom right hand corner and call that done 2024 and there we have it so take the tape off just neatly take the tape off around the edges like that this is the best bit it's a fun bit because it makes it gives it a little bit of a frame around the edge all right so that is done there we go, all done. 
So that was a fun little watercolour sketch. I will see you all probably tomorrow. I will stream again. So have an awesome day and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.